Welcome to this Patent Academy lesson on setting up Microsoft Teams to work with Patent Session Border Controllers. When we are done, we will have a Patent SBC interconnected with Microsoft Teams. For this demonstration, we have a SmartNode 5501 for our test device. We also have the same device here registered on the Patent Cloud. And this device needs to be provisioned to work with Microsoft Teams. We will do the provisioning using a web wizard. So as a first step, we need to download the web wizard that we want to use from the patent web page. Here is the configuration wizard web page. If you would like to find a web wizard which is related to Microsoft Teams, you just have to type Teams in the keyword search box and click search. As described in the configuration guide for MS Teams Direct Routing, there are two main topologies to be considered, which differ in the way that the SBC is connected to the PSTN trunk, one without IPBBX and the other with IPBBX. There are several differences between both SBC configurations, so that is the reason why here we have two dedicated web wizards that are available. First, we have a wizard for direct routing of teams without IPPBX on the LAN, which means that on the local area network, we probably have some IP phones. And the second one is the wizard for Microsoft Teams direct routing integration when we have IPPBX on our local area network. In this video lesson, we will demonstrate setting things up when we have an IP phone on our LAN. So we will choose the first one. Here we have the option to download the wizard, so we will download the wizard locally onto our computer. We will save this to our desktop. Next, we want to go to the web interface for our SmartNode 5501 and upload the wizard to the SBC. We go to the System menu, and then Wizard Files. We click Browse, and in the file window that comes up, we navigate to our desktop. Select the wizard file, click Open, and this will be our new wizard, like we have selected here, which will be uploaded and stored on our SBC. OK, so here is the result. When we finish the uploading of the wizard, we can close this window and start the wizard itself. There are two ways we can start a wizard. We can go here in the side menu and click Wizard, or we have a wizard icon here in the menu bar that we can also click on to start the wizard. Let's do that. When we click to start the wizard, this first window appears. It shows a list of all the wizards found on the smart node. Our wizard is listed first here at the top of the window. Direct routing without IPBBX is what we will choose. And now the wizard will take us step by step through the device configuration. First, we want to highlight just a couple of things. As you can see, we have some values which are light gray in color. That means those are the default values. If you don't put anything in this box and replace this value, then you will have this value as a default. Also, over here you have information and description of every option, what it means, and what you have to enter for that option. All right, first we will enter the host name. Here I have a parameters list for our setup, which we will use today. So for the host name, we will use sbc1.patentinout.com. The time zone offset will be GMT plus 1. You can choose your time zone offset from the drop-down menu. Daylight saving time is checked by default. And of course, you can uncheck that. Password. In this section, you are defining the password for super user admin. You can leave it blank. The system won't prevent that. But we highly recommend that you create a strong, complex password. We will keep it simple for today's lesson and just use route as a password, which we then retype. And this box is asking for your Patent Cloud Organization ID. This ID field is not mandatory. You only enter an Organization ID when you are a Patent Cloud user and when you would like to register your SBC after you have finished the provisioning. In this lesson, we do want to use Patent Cloud, so let's go find our Organization key. So we can go to Patent Cloud and retrieve the Patent Cloud ID there. It is listed in the Device section, and here you can find the key, a unique key for every organization. And that key needs to be put here in Cloud Organization ID. Then we click Next. Now we are setting up the WAN IP address for the smart node. The WAN IP address is the IP address for communication with Microsoft Teams, and also, probably, for communication with your internet service provider. 
Here we will choose the option Static. Now I will add the IP address from our parameters list. And again, just to remind us, those light gray values are the default values. If we do not put anything in those fields, then the wizard will use those default values. Now we don't want to use the default values. We would like to use our own values from our parameter list. So here we are entering values for IP address, netmask, default gateway, and we are also defining our DNS servers. And for these two fields, we are setting up the LAN IP address and the LAN netmask. We also have parameters for that as well. After we have successfully finished entering these values, we can go to our next wizard screen by clicking on Next. Here we are defining the DHCP server on LAN. This is optional. We only need to enable this DHCP server on LAN if we would like to have a DHCP server configured on the patent gateway to be a DHCP server, for example, for your IP phones on your LAN. That's one possible use. But in this case, in setting up for Teams, we will not use it. But if you would like to use DHCP on your local area network, then you need to define all these settings here. You need to define the network, netmask, the gateway, the DHCP range, and so on. For our lesson in this video, we will keep DHCP disabled. And in this field, we enter the IP address that gives us direct access to the device. Of course, you can leave this field blank if you would like, but in this case, we would like to be able to access the device from a public IP. So, in this WAN Access Network box, we will put our public IP so we can directly access the device via the web interface or SSH. This IP address will be added to the Access Control List to allow access to this IP address from the outside. You can set additional IP addresses ranges manually in your SBC configuration after the reboot if required. Then we go to Next, and now we have ITSP and SIP settings. In this first field, we have to set up the local SIP port. This is the listening port on the patent SBC side for communication with Microsoft Teams. The local SIP listen port towards Teams has to match with the SIP signaling port that you have configured on the Microsoft Direct Routing side through the MS Teams Admin Center. In our case, it is 5061. And in this section, we are defining the parameters for the ITSP. In this case, we are assuming that you have a SIP trunk from your SIP provider, and the parameters you get from your SIP provider need to be entered here. For this lesson, we are using a SIP trunk from PeoplePhone. So I will use the name PeoplePhone. We highly recommend that you keep the name in all capital letters. When you generate the configuration and then apply it on your SBC, the names with all capital letters are much easier to find and much easier to spot when you are doing debugging and troubleshooting. Of course, you can enter small letters. The system won't reject them, or all big letters. It's totally up to you, but our suggestion is to put all capital letters. Now here we are defining the domain. In our case, it will be this one, and the ITSP domain name will be, in our case, the same. For registrar, here we can enter the URL or IP of your SIP registrar. And here we have where we enter the ITSP username and password. In our case, this number is our username, and then here is our password for this demo account. And let's retype the password. And here we can enter the team's phone number range. This is the range of numbers which are registered with your ITSP. Alternatively, you can use the word default instead of a number range if you don't want to limit the routing to a certain number range only. International Country Code the international country code, as you can see, is 41 by default. And that country code needs to be specified, despite the fact that in this range number, you have the international country code here as well. So 41 in this case, it has to be entered here. Since 41 is the default value for this wizard, we do not have to change anything. But when you are configuring your patent SBC, you have to put your country code in here. And now before we finish and generate the wizard, we have in the bottom right corner two options. We have an option to preview and an option to save and reboot. Save and reboot will automatically save this configuration to your SBC, and it will reboot the SBC and apply the configuration. 
so we choose that to apply and save our settings to the startup configuration. But we highly recommend that you first preview your configuration. We can see what we have configured so far by just clicking on the Preview button. And here we can see that the web wizard generates for us a configuration for the device and all parameters necessary in order for it to be able to work with Microsoft Teams. So, after you check your parameters here and you are confident that you have configured everything as expected, you can just click Save and Reboot, which is still right down here in the corner. Let's do that. The wizard will ask you, are you sure you want to apply the generated configuration and reboot? We are, so we will click Yes. After we click Yes, then the configuration generated by the web wizard will automatically be saved to the startup configuration of the device. After the device comes up, we will be able to see the configuration of the device that can be applied automatically. So we have to wait a minute or two for it to finish. If we switch in the meantime to Patent Cloud, we can see that the device is not online anymore. The device is rebooting, and we are expecting at some point that the device will come back up. OK, now the device is back again, and now we have to log in. So the default login is admin. This is the default super user account, and the password for this lesson is route. OK, now we have logged in to the device. We can see that the device is up and running, and now we can switch to the Patent Cloud to see whether the device is online again there. And it is. The device is online. There is also one more step we must take before we can try and set up calls between our IP phones and Microsoft Teams. We have to finish the TLS configuration. Inside the dedicated TLS profile on the Patent Gateway, we have to generate a certificate. The procedure goes like this. We have to generate a certificate request on the Patent SBC. And then we have to send that certificate request to a certificate authority to be signed by them. Once the certificate authority signs the certificate request and sends it back to us, we need to upload it to the device. You can find out more about this procedure in the Configuring Patent Smart Node ESBC with Microsoft Teams Direct Routing Manual. And we can find the TLS certificate section here. And here we have a very detailed and well-explained procedure on how you can generate the private and public keys, how to generate certificate requests, and so on. All of those things have been done by us, and we have already applied those certificates on our SBC here for this lesson. So that will be an additional step for you that we are not showing here in this video lesson. It's a significant topic, and we've created a separate, dedicated video tutorial covering just that, the TLS configuration of the SmartNode SBC for Microsoft Teams. You need to implement the steps described there before you can proceed to the call test like we are about to do here. So for this video lesson, let's assume that we have just finished the TLS configuration of our SmartNode SBC. Now we will do a test where we will make some calls between my IP phone on the LAN, which is on the screen here, and Microsoft Teams, and my Microsoft Teams user. The 3CX soft phone here in our example, by the way, is registered to another ITSP provider and simulates the PSTN user. First, we will call the following number. So this is the number of our IP phone. And now we will call that number from Microsoft Teams. We can see that a call is coming in here. The call is reaching the device. And on the patent SBC, we can say, show call control, call continuously. And we can see that the call is here. Now we can drop the call, and we can see that there are now no active calls in between Teams and our device. Now we will make a call from the IP phone and call a Microsoft Teams number. So here's the number we should call. And now we can see that the call is coming in to Microsoft Teams. And here we can see that there is an active call and there is alerting. So the ringing is currently happening. And now we will drop the call. The call is now ended. And there you go. That's it. And that concludes this Patent Academy lesson on setting up Microsoft Teams to work with patent session border controllers. Thanks for watching.